I'm super pumped because it is finally time for me to have my own rock bouncer again. This right here is my ride chassis. This is a 2021 ride chassis, so the front end is three and a half inches lower. And I'm gonna do a couple different things on mine, like these rock sliders slash steps. I'm probably gonna do an extra bar right here. Add a couple extra panels up top, fill in all of these, leave these front two open. It'll basically be a copy of the shot buggy because I've driven it and I like it so well that it will be basically a copy of that one. And me and Jacob both have the same one, so we can decide who is the better driver now. What's up everybody, Jake Berkey here and I am sitting in front of the brand new Busted Knuckle Films Buggy. Now every year we're trying to build ourselves a new buggy so we can show you guys some of the key components that makes these vehicles great. This particular buggy behind me is specifically designed to be one of the base models but with a couple key upgrades that make it awesome. Therefore, whenever we go four wheeling and we're out there and we're doing our thing, you can see what a base model can do and what these machines are capable of. So a couple things that we changed for 2022 and that we did special on Matt's buggies that we're doing on all the buggies now is for starters, we ended up going with a keyed high steer arm for our factory knuckles. Now, traditionally, we've used a standard high steer arm that goes on top of the 05 up Super Duty knuckle, and then we flat top it and use six grade nine bolts. 
but we started putting a key down the inside to give it a little bit more strength and it's gonna be an awesome combination. We haven't seen any failures before in the past, but you know, a little bit extra strength never hurts. Another new thing on this rig is that we changed the way that we manufacture our link bars to give them a little bit more sleek design. We actually engraved BKOR on the side and then changed the way that the wrench flats go in so you can adjust your suspension. The next thing we did is went into the transfer case mount and we changed it from a steel mount to a billet aluminum mount that has the same strength but saves a little bit of weight. Now of course, this is Matt's rig, so we wanted to make sure that he had comfort. So he went for the communications kit by Rugged Radios, which is a fantastic way to spend a little bit of money because it helps you out a ton with communications, cuts the noise level down, and it's just a great way to incorporate all of the different buggies together when you're out trail riding. Second thing he did was went with these awesome heated pterodactyl ball bag seats. These things are sweet, and I don't know if you've ever sat in one of these things, but it's pretty awesome and I'm a little jealous. Our goal with this rig was to create basically Shop Buggy 2.0 with our updated chassis. You've got better visibility and just show everybody out there that it's a budget friendly rig that you can get into and with a few little tiny upgrades, you can outperform everybody else on the trail. What do I think is going to happen tomorrow? Well, we're going to go out four wheeling tomorrow and uh, I think that it's going to be a little bit muddy and we're not going to want to get it dirty, but uh, Matt's one of those guys that like he'll putz around for about five to seven minutes <laughs> and then he's taking the red pill and it's wide open. I am so pumped to be going four wheeling today. It has been years since I had my own rock bouncer. And me and Jake both sold ours when we started the shop three years ago. And this was the goal that eventually we would both have our own again of our own builds from us knuckle off road. They would be dialed in and we'd be able to go and beat on them every weekend together. And uh, man, it's a dream come true. I can't wait to see what it does this weekend. Should be just like the shop buggy. So I should be able to hop in there and be pretty comfortable with it, but we'll see. It's gonna be hard to put the first couple of scratches on that brand new powder coat.
landed so smooth, man. It never touched the bump stops, at least it didn't feel like it, but it landed smooth. Too. Look good. Heck yeah, now it's your turn. Uh -huh. All right, so far the buggy's doing amazing. Um, it, it drives just like the shop buggy. I've driven a few times, so it's like being in the same buggy, working really good. We made our way over to Stairway. It was one of the harder climbs. And it might not be super difficult, but it's just sketchy. It's just steep. It's got big wedges. So we'll see what we can do here. What a show off. Look, look at the smile. That's what I said. Look at the smile. When I hit this, I thought that was just like I'm going to drive out of it. about putting on the roof. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, y'all showed me the line, so I mean. Oh. I mean, you pretty much just one shot that thing. And that was nasty. What's going through your head? It's all buggy, man. I wish I could say I was a good driver, but. You are a good driver. Don't take that away from yourself. <laughs> Quiet, we're selling buggies here, Jake. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, it's like exceeded my expectations like by far. I, it's amazing that but, you can come up with something like that. Unbelievable. That let's, let's get a camera fist bump. Yeah. Bam! For all the people on the internet, they're just like, why don't you just air down and crawl it? Well, that's a Toyota on red labels and he's air down and no. Nah.
You don't play. It's like almost on its side. Jeez. It's got nuts. It looks like nobody's hit YouTube Hill in a long time. And as you can see, oh Scott, the bottom is probably the hardest part. This up here might, might be a cakewalk. I don't know. But I was one of the first people to climb YouTube Hill, so I might as well come over and hit it in the brand new build. We made it. That spot's tricky. Of course, Jake just picked it apart.
Guys, I could not be possibly happier with this build than I am right now. Like, we've, you've seen the videos, you've seen us. We went to RBD, we went trail riding the day that the buggy was done, and I went to KOH for five days and wheeled the whole time, and this thing just has performed flawlessly. And we couldn't have done it without the help of a few companies. I just wanted to thank them real quick. Uh, first and foremost, Bust the Knuckle Off-Road, Jake and the guys, poured their heart and soul into this machine to make sure that it was up to snuff and that I could go out and just show everybody when we're out four wheeling how good these machines are and how well built our production rock bouncers are and hopefully sell a few more. Um, other than that, Radflow helped us out with the shocks. Um, they are dialed in, Jake's got these. It's unbelievable how well a rock bouncer can ride when you have good shocks that are set up well. Uh, we got RCV, got the Big Bell 40 spline RCVs up front on this thing now and uh, I don't worry about it when I hit the gas on this thing. You can freaking jump it up in the air, lay them wide open throttle, no problems. I'm not worried about braking. Yukon helped us out. We got 488 Yukon gears um, in the axles front and rear. We've got one of their 35 spline spools in the rear and a 40 spline spool in the front. So big thanks to those guys. Yukon is one of those companies that has helped me out and worked with me since the beginning of Bust a Knuckle and I really appreciate them. Then we got PSC, I mean, this thing wouldn't steer that good without the PSC stuff on it. Uh, we got their double-ended ram up front. We got their steering pump and all that stuff just performs flawless. We put it on all of our production bouncers and have had zero issues out of them. So big thanks to those guys for keeping the, uh, the tires pointing where I want them to go. And now I didn't, rock lights have never really been a thing that I cared that much about. Now we started using Infant Off-Road for these builds and using their magnetic mounts um, for their rock lights. and. When it came time for me to do my build, I hit them up and of course they sent a full kit or we put some extra ones in mine and I absolutely love it. I mean, it looks awesome when it's sitting there in front of the booth, you know, at one of the shows. And I mean, it works great on the trail. I can change the colors to whatever I want. Like right now I got like the matching yellow going on, but big thanks to those guys because I freaking love the rock lights. Another company that was huge on this build was Holly Performance. Not only will we use their Holly Hydromat in the fuel cell to make sure that fuel picks up no matter how it's sloshing or what angle we're at, uh, we use their fuel pump, all kinds of fuel system stuff, so big thanks to those guys. Um, Earl's fittings, we used all of their fittings on this machine. It's entirely plumbed with their stuff and I've had zero issues, zero leaks, and that'll tell you the kind of quality that you're getting out of Earl's fittings. And then of course, we can't not thank Flowmaster because they're the reason that it sounds like this. I freaking love the lope of this thing. It sounds amazing. Now last but not least is Heat Shield products. Now they've been sending us products to test out for a while and when it came to my build, I definitely wanted to do something with the floor panels to make sure that we didn't have that heat from the exhaust and everything resonating into the cabin because you don't want the inside of your buggy to be roasting hot in the middle of summertime because that's not fun for anybody. And I've actually been pleasantly surprised. Like stuff was super easy. Um, I used some of their heat shield and it's just, you know, take the sticky side off the back of it, stick it on there, cut it to shape, whatever you need to do. And it's been really tough. I've gotten dirt and rocks and thrown that at it pressure wash it, no issues whatsoever, and it keeps that heat from transferring through the panel. So big shout out to those guys and everybody that helped out with this build. Like this is, it, it's crazy. I mean, I had a bouncer before, but it was nothing, nothing like this one. This one is amazing. And I've been trail riding and have just had an absolute blast with this machine. This is what a Brock bouncer is supposed to do and what it's, how it's supposed to perform. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. It's just, it's hard to believe that they can do this well. Um, with that, I've done a bunch of trail riding. I haven't raced it. Um, March 12th, Bogs and Boulders down in uh, Brooklyn, Alabama. I'll be racing this thing for the first time. I've, it's been a long time since I raced a rock bouncer. So if you guys want to see me race a rock bouncer, March 11th through 13th, we'll be, in, we'll be down at Bogs and Boulders. Come check it out, watch me race. See if we can uh, keep this thing together. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that. And hey, maybe get on the podium. All right, and one last thing. For you folks at home, yeah you, I really appreciate it. Like watching the videos, buying the merch, like just supporting everything we do in this crazy dream that I came up with years ago that I thought I could travel around and video. And hell, I just thought that 
I could video and be close to the action and I never really dreamed of owning a rock bouncer myself and now this will be the second one I've ever owned. It's just crazy and uh, I mean, from the bottom of my heart I really appreciate everybody's support, watching the videos and uh, you know, supporting this crazy dream that I've had.